Welcome to this free immigration help channel. Today is March 8, 2023 and we are starting with the volume 28 of me answering your immigration related questions. As always, I'm going to mention I am not an immigration attorney. This is not a legal advice. All the information that I provide in my videos on this channel are directly from official government sources like USCIS.gov and the Department of State, uh, amongst a few others. Uh, today is March 8th, uh, so it's an International Women's Day, so I wanted to say uh, uh, congratulations to all, all the women. Uh, happy Women's Day, happy March 8th. Let's start with the very first uh, comment, which is actually just a thank you from Simone. Thank you for your information, extremely helpful. You're very welcome, Simone. Thank you for watching. Thank you everyone for watching and for asking these questions because it is with your help that I'm able to make these videos. Obviously, the more questions I get, the more people watch, the more I can make videos like this where I go and answer the questions. And if you find my videos helpful, that's really everything that you know I am working for. Uh, one thing that I wanted to mention though here, Simone, she commented on uh, the most recent video that I uploaded yesterday, why was I denied during family immigration interview? Uh, it was the actual case. Uh, one of the subscribers messaged me about this. And uh, from now on, I will start making more videos about actual cases uh, that are a little bit more unique, all right? A little bit different, just so that you can see how some of the cases are some of the immigration cases are being handled what happens just in case you know it's, it doesn't necessarily mean that the same situation is going to be with your case but if you are familiar with certain outcomes you will be already you know more prepared for for whatever it is to come all right moving on further to the next one from md habiru rahman bad i know it's really bad he commented on the understanding visa bulletin if you haven't seen that video check it out uh, basically, I'm talking about the backlog and once you start learning more about the backlog, you will realize how bad things are. So is it is really bad, really, really bad. Okay, so let's get to our first question for uh, today's video from Mohammed Saiduddin. Please, can you please update the F4 category? How much time does it take? My filing date, 18 May 2006. All right, Mohammed, let's take a look. I do have the visa bulletin for March 2023 pulled up here. Uh, it is the most recent visa, visa bulletin that is available right now. Uh, as you can see, the April did not come out yet, but it should be coming, coming out very, very soon. So let's take a look. Um, I do know that it is a F4 category and it the filing date is uh, May 2006. So let's take a look. If it's the filing date, then we're, we're looking at the B graph, dates for filing, and then the F4 category, which is brothers and sisters of adult US citizens, which uh, is a fourth priority category, so it does take some time. And as you can see, uh, as of right now, as of March 2023, they are processing cases f that were filed back, not processing, they're issuing the visa the immigrant visa is becoming available for cases that were filed back in December 2007 all right so we have a case from 18th of May 2006 and uh, the cases that are processed are from December 2007 which is a uh, uh, past all, almost um, well actually let's see December we got January, so about six months, six months. So with that being said, Mohammed, your availability for the immigrant visa should be just any time now, because as you can see, they are, you know, the visas are becoming available already for December 2007 and you filed in May 2006. The only thing, the only reason why I'm thinking that there is a delay is that somewhere in between, uh, maybe with the NVC uh, filling out, you know, all the paperwork. And actually that was my follow-up question I wanted to ask. Has the case, I mean, case should have been transferred already NVC by now. Uh, have you received the uh, access to the portal? so that you can become documentarily qualified. Uh, if you can follow up with that information, that would be great. Uh, I'm going to post this. Let's see, didn't copy, there we go. And if you can follow up with uh, the answer, just 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 let me know if you first of all fall in any, 
in any of this china india i'm not thinking mexico philippines just in case the chargeability uh, or or are you in all chargeability areas i'm thinking you probably are here within this graph uh, but what i really want to know is if your case has been already uh, transferred to the NVC and you have already done everything on the NVC side or not yet, uh, because that would help me make a better estimate. Okay, let's move on to the next one uh, from Lolo Nadis. Thank you, you're very welcome. So if approved, is there a fee you have to pay for the expedited request? Okay, great question. No, there is no fee. So the only fees uh, that you encounter whenever it comes to the expedited process is uh, with the uh, applications or petitions that have the premium processing. Now, the I-130 has the premium processing, but it is specifically for um, the category like the employment, the student. Um, so it's, it's specifically for those. Whenever it comes... well. A student doesn't fall for for I-130, but they do have the employment, which is I-129, uh, basically sponsorship-based, right? Um, petitions. Uh, but whenever it comes to most other applications, when you are requesting the expedited processing, if it is approved, great, great, because most of them are unfortunately denied. But if it is approved, there is no additional fee. All right, let's move on to the next one from Martina McPherson. What does it mean by estimated case decision two months? Uh, okay, so uh, I'm not sure which form specifically you're referring. You commented on immigration news updates. Um, so estimated case decision in two months. So if, uh, if, 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 it's, if it's the case, if, if two months is the estimated case decision, then within two months, you can estimate that there will be the decision made on uh, this case. So that's really it. But if you do have a little bit more specific, uh, let me know which application that you're referring to and I will be, uh, I'll try to do a better job answering your question. All right, let's move on to the next one from Enzama Dennis. Hi, thanks. You're very welcome. Is it possible for me to get H1B visa without degree? But I have special talent in preparing African dishes especially when I'm going to work in food processing factory. Okay, and I'm a really excellent question. So whenever it comes to H1B visa, yes, you would have one of the very first thing you will see if you go, and I'm going to use this as a, a little bit of a demonstration how to navigate USAS. This is the USAS.gov official government website for US citizenship, citizenship and immigration services. So we're going to go to the uh, working in US. There is this tab right here on the very front page, learn more. And on this side right here, you will find a few different uh, basically categories whenever it comes to the employment. So we're going to click on temporary worker because that's what H1B is. And if you click on the H1B itself, one of the very first things that you will see in eligibility criteria is the bachelor degree or higher degree. However, as a general rule of thumb, especially whenever it comes to stuff like, in your case, Enzoma, you know, preparing, you know, cooking skills, uh, that kind of stuff really, yes, of course, you can probably learn that in, 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 in college, I guess, but that is more, that has to do with experience. And generally, generally, USAS, they consider three years of experience, of work experience, being equal to one year of college experience. So let's say if you're a bachelor's degree in culinary arts, right? I guess that's what really what's going to be, right? With the cooking. Uh, so if, uh, let's say, if you do need to do uh, three years in order to complete that, uh, you know, an equivalent work experience would be nine years working for... Um, working in um, this specific uh, area, right? Cooking, in your case. So if you do have that, then, then there, there is a way definitely to, to you know, show that and say, hey, I, have, I don't have the college degree, but I have all this work experience. And besides, you can try to find anybody you want in the United States and they're not going to be as, you know, nobody will replace the skill that I have coming from you know Africa and I'm obviously bringing this experience with me cooking experience in uh, African cuisine go ahead and try to find anybody you want like that in 
America. Good luck with that, right? Even with a college degree. So basically, that's what you will have to establish. So to answer your question, yes, it is possible 100% without uh, the degree. Just be prepared that you will have to do uh, that. You will have some explaining to do, and obviously some, you know, supporting documentation showing that you actually do have that uh, work experience. So I'm gonna pause this, and you already know if you have any follow-up questions, go ahead and uh, we'll be addressing that later. All right, let's move on to the next one from Fabian Abu. Hi, I am from Ethiopia and my husband was a 2020 DV lottery winner and we got married during his transition time, after he got his visa and before he got his green card. Ah, I see. Will this affect our process now? Okay, Fabian. So, excellent question and I'm sure for for other people who are watching this video this will be helpful as well so whenever it comes to the dv lottery right if if your husband already got the visa the immigrant visa which is like the very final stage for the most part really because that um immigrant visa on its own is a temporary uh permanent residence card as soon as you come into the united states right so the way it works is it's it's called i-551 uh, the 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 immigrant visa I-551, right? Um, once it is issued at the embassy, it's just an immigrant visa, right? Once you come into the United States and there is a stamp in your passport that you have entered the United States of America, this immigrant visa I-551 automatically converts into the temporary permanent resident card. And then within like 90 days usually, that's what they say, but some, most of the times it's faster, you actually get the actual permanent resident card, the green card itself, right? So with that being said, the status of your husband, if he has not been in the United States of America yet, obviously he's, he did not activate that, that uh, temporary permanent residence yet, if he did not come here. So with that kind of uh, going there, right, my recommendation would be if you want to make things as fast as possible for yourself, the best case scenario would be him coming here, activating that temporary permanent residence card and immediately filing the form I-130, which is a petition for alien relative, saying that, hey, I am now a permanent resident and I am filing, there you go, I am filing for my spouse. Now, whenever it comes to filing for the spouse, um, if you're interested, I've done a video on how to check out the processing times, but if you really want to know, just ask me on the next video and I'll do it. I don't wanna you know, spend too much time going into this if you're not interested in uh, checking that out. But if you do wanna know the processing times, let me know and I will uh, show you how to actually uh, check that. But I, I, I'm thinking that would be the best, the best thing to do. And I, I, I think you guys done it the right way because I have seen cases, and again, I, I wanna make it helpful to other people who are watching. I have seen cases where the change in the family happens whether the marriage or maybe a child was born before the interview and then the family goes to an interview and they face problems. I've seen, I, I have actually seen the case where they were denied during that interview, during the final stage, the green card interview. Basically, it was a, it was a, it was a family of three, husband, wife and the child and they you know, one green card while during this all this process was going on, but before the interview, there was another child that was born. So when they went for an interview, they were like, hey, wait a second, on, on your original application and everything, we have three people. And now you come here, four people. Yeah, understandable th things change, but they didn't do, do it the right way. They didn't update it. Uh, as they should have in the process. So once they went for an interview, they got denied. It's it's really sad, but it happens. In your case, it's, it's much better because you actually went for an interview and, well, not you, your husband, and you got the visa. So now it's just the matter of filing that petition uh, for the alien relative. So I'm gonna put this in here. And if you have any follow-up questions, don't hesitate to ask them. All right, moving further to Enzama Dennis. Once again, hello, may I know if I don't have a degree? Am I eligible for H1B? Yes, so I've already addressed that. Uh, again, from Enzama, great. I definitely love your work. Thank you, Enzama, it means a lot. Uh, your kind words really do mean a lot to me. You know, it shows me that 
the work that I'm putting in is not in vain. Uh, moving further to a question from Irina Ricci. Uh, Irina, I think I pronounced it correctly. I made mistake in the I-765 form AB immigration status. And maybe an immigration status. Can I change it? I already passed the biometric checkpoint. Okay, so that was a question posted on I-765, application for employment authorization document. So, Irina, I wanna, I wanna ask you a follow-up question. Uh, which immigration status are you referring to specifically? Because if you are referring to the immigration status that shows your eligibility for the employment authorization document, I would say, yes, this is very important and you wanna address it as soon as possible. Call USAS, send them an email, send them a letter, just cover letter saying, hey, you know, I've made a mistake in this, I wanna correct it, call them call them right now and say, ask the representative and say, hey, you know, I made a mistake, what can I do to change it? They'll probably say the same thing, either send the email or send the cover letter by mail asking us to make an update in the application. <laughs> However, if it's a immigration status of, because there is an application how you came in and all that sort of stuff, and they ask you, you came in on which visa and stuff like that. So it's less important, so I wouldn't worry about it that much. I would still recommend calling USAS and asking them if if they really need it updated and how. Uh, but it's not a, as big of a deal as the eligibility itself, because it is the eligibility that determines whether you qualify for the employment authorization or not. So hopefully that makes sense. If you can follow up with a little bit more information on specifically which immigrants immigration status you're referring to, that would be helpful. Uh, but yes, I would definitely recommend reaching out to USAS and uh, asking them how to proceed with that correction. All right, moving further to a question from Ashama Panus, and sorry if I'm mispronouncing the names. Sir, I filed my children 2012. Okay, 2012. When F3 category, when they are get visa, please help me. I'm a senior citizen of USA. All right, so if you have filed children 2012 F3 category, let's take a look at the visa bulletin. Uh, F3 category is married sons and daughters of US citizens, okay? So married sons and daughters is a priority three. And let's see, the application was filed in 2012. Right now they are processing as of March, 2023, they are, issuing visas, the visas become available. That's that's the correct way to say it. The visa, visas become available for the cases filed back in November 2009. So, Ashama, you filed it in 2012, so there's a three-year delay. So I would say if, if the things stay the same way and if they move at the same pace, not speed up and not slow down, you're looking at about another three years for the visa become available. So somewhere in 2026. But again, this is a rough estimate because that's why the visa bulletin, I, I, you know, if you haven't seen the video that I've made, it's called Understanding Visa Bulletin. Check it out. Every month, I'm gonna make an updated visa bulletin video. So for March, I have made this video right here. Obviously when April comes out, I will make it for April. But, <coughs> Basically, what Visa Bulletin shows is it shows how fast these cases are being processed, how much of the backlog is there. Is it speeding up or is it slowing down? A lot of times it stays the same, but sometimes you see that movement and you're really happy because it's it's finally moving, moving along. And things are starting to move along uh, because we had a huge, huge delay in the processing with all the stuff that happened in the past couple of years uh, but now things are starting to move along so we're starting to see um, some movement uh, but as of right now rough estimate but as of right now still three years uh, three years uh, behind um, so yeah about 2026 so I'm gonna put this right here and we're gonna move on to the next comment from here I'm Patel and I think I'm gonna try to get three more so this video is not too long. <laughs> okay, so here I'm Patel um, asking my immigration file F2A in Potomac Center. Okay, great, I, I, I love the details. <laughs> my priority date is 
March 17, 2020. Documentarily qualified date September 2022. How long I wait for interview? Okay, congratulations here and first of all, you're already documentarily qualified as of September 2022. That's fantastic. So you, let me double check the F2A visa. I'm pretty sure there is no. Yep, as you can see, it is current. Uh, so F2A is the spouses and children of permanent residents. On this particular category, there is no cap for the visas. So once you are documentarily qualified, your visa is already available for you. The only thing that you're waiting for now is for the NVC, for the Department of State to actually forward this case to an appropriate U.S. Embassy, consular, uh, local in your country, right? Forward them the, the case and say, hey guys, we have someone who is uh, documentarily qualified. They're ready for the interview, schedule the interview the, whenever it is available. Uh, so if you have been documentarily qualified in September 2022, let me count, that is uh, September, October, November, December, January, February, March. So it's been six months, which is about six months that you you, you get your, your uh, interview. Um, about six months it really depends on where the uh, u.s embassy is located sometimes it, it's a little bit faster sometimes it's a little bit slower depending on how busy that uh, u.s embassy is in that particular country um, so but but around six months is usually when it comes to scheduling the interview now uh, with that being said once the interview is scheduled usually it's scheduled one month out so you have a whole month to do the medical examination. Once you do get your um, interview date, schedule the medical examination as soon as possible and take care of it uh, because there is some time between the doctor and sending all the documentation to the embassy and you wanna make sure that when you actually come for an interview, they already have everything. But everything is looking good uh, on your end and I, I really appreciate all the details because that's very, very helpful. Uh, but you should be getting your interview notice notice really anytime now. Um, I, I'm going to mention if it, if it will make it uh, um, a little bit more, uh, if it will give you a little bit more peace of mind, you can always uh, fill out a public inquiry form with the Department of State and actually follow up, give them your case number, give them the dates just like you provided here and say, hey guys, you know, I have been documentarily qualified, but I haven't had the interview scheduled yet, just to kind of get the follow up uh, from them. But so far, everything is, is, is looking good on your end. All right, let's move on to the next one from Raymond Payano. Hello, can I apply for the fee waiver and the N400 online? Okay, excellent question that was asked on uh, the video that I made for I-912, which is uh, the fee waiver form, uh, basically application for request, that's what it is, request for a fee waiver. Uh, and uh, whenever it comes to the fee waiver, what you want to do is you want to submit the application together with that fee waiver. So because the N400 is online, the best thing to do is to file the N400 online and then send where whichever the um, whichever the service center, the processing service center, right, that your N400 would go to your paper N400. So let's say if you needed to actually mail the N400, which service center would you send it to, right? So that's where you send your I-912 right after you're done with your online application. Alternatively, of course, if you want to have the 100% peace, peace of mind, knowing that USAS got your fee, request for a fee waiver immediately with the application, you can always mail that application by paper. But in that case, obviously it's going to be, you know, taking the, the, the processing will take a little bit longer because online is, is, is much faster. You're saving, you know, at least, at least couple of weeks for the processing uh, with, and you know, filing the form uh, online. So if you prefer to do it online, file it online and immediately send the request for a fee waiver to the service center where you would have mailed your N400 if you would have fi filed it by paper, using paper, by mail. Uh, and if you want to, you can do it everything by paper, but it will take 
longer. All right, let's move on to the next one from the uh, Coconuts. I uh, probably didn't pronounce it correctly. Hi, how to check parents' immigration status or timeline? Thank you. Okay, Coconut X, excellent question. So whenever it depends on where your case is at, right? So if you want to get the full um, full spectrum, right, of the timelines, you will have to check it with USAS. Check the I-130 processing at the USAS. So you will show which category the uh, you're filing based on which service center right and depending which service center it is which category it is it can vary from like 10 month processing to like two years processing right depending on which category and which service center once it is approved by usas the case is transferred to the nvc usually there is about a month if the visa is available before the case is transferred to the nvc and you get the welcome letter but if the visa is not available in some cases they don't actually send you the welcome letter. The NVC does not send you the welcome letter until about like a year or six months closer to that visa availability. And uh, the visa availability, it will again depend on which category you're, you're filing, right? Uh, but that information you can look up on that visa bulletin. So again, if you check out actually you commented on this video. Yes. So this is it. This part right here is the NVC part. Uh, if you want to find out on USAS, then you would have to actually use the USAS and I'm actually going to show it so that you know the navigation, whoever's watching will be helpful. You go to tools, you go to case status online. That, there, there's, I think, easier way to do it, but that's how I do it. Just kind of stuck with me. USAS processing times information and then visit page. And there we go. We select the form I-130 here, category, whichever category, you know, if you're a permanent resident filing for a spouse, if you're a US citizen filing for a child, whatever it is, select that, select the service center where it is being processed. Obviously, you're gonna have all that information and then get processing times. And it will give you the estimate. Keep in mind, it's only 80%, so 20% still are processed either faster or slower. This is rough estimate but still it is very very helpful to know at least approximately how long these uh, take but again this is USAS side and then you also have the NVC side keep that in mind so I'm gonna put that and we're gonna move on to the next one looks like we have time for a couple more from Claudia Schwipe or Schwipe sorry if I'm mispronouncing the name do you feel one form for a family of four or one waiver per person including minor children okay so that was on i-912 excellent qu question claudia thank you very much for bringing this up so whenever it comes to i-912 it is it basically you're filing that request for a fee waiver per application which means if you have four people and one application right so all four people are on the same application then you are just filing one request for a fee waiver if you have to submit a separate application for each family member because some applications you can just put everybody like for example asylum right now with the asylum application or application for asylum withholding of removal um, basically you are yes you are putting everybody on one application you do submit the copies of like of, of the application for each additional family member but w w nevertheless it is still a one application document package that you're sending so i mean here it's not applicable because it's already free but you get the point if you have to file separate applications for each family member then you would have to have a separate request for a fee waiver for each of those applications so it's not per person it's per application all right I'll put this and we're gonna move on to uh Enzema Dennis. All right. And that looks like it's going to be the last because this one from Mark Dismang actually already addressed this question in one of the previous uh, videos. So Enzema Dennis. Hello. I'm so grateful to have you. Thank you very much. Enzema means a lot. I'm from Uganda. I would like to know the length stay for Uganda's 
on B2 visa and pressing period for 2023. I would like to apply for the visa. Please advise about the eligibility. Thanks. Okay, Enzima. So great question. Whenever it comes to the uh, country specific, the best way to obtain that information is actually going to the US embassy in Uganda. All right. And the way to, to find that is all you're doing is you're going US M. Let's see if I can see M c.gov and they will give you the list of all the embassies so let's see if we can find uganda there we go and we'll see how many embassies are actually in uganda so there's only one there you go you just click on this this is the embassy for uganda this is where you will be able to find that information for how long these visas are issued uh for most of the times it, unless the, the country has like some kind of limitations it's either four years or one year whenever it comes to B1, B2 visas, non-immigrant tourist visitor for pleasure um, visas. But with that being said, once you enter the United States with that visa, you are also issued uh, a duration of stay, all right? Uh, your I-94. And, and most of the times that duration of stay is issued for six months. So it doesn't matter whether you have a one year, four year or three months, visa b1 b2 visa when you come here most of the times you're given uh, six months uh, to stay in the united states so i'm gonna do this say that this was addressed and that would be it for today 30 minutes perfect timing again thank you everyone for asking your questions without your questions i wouldn't be able to make these videos so i i'm always always really really happy don't don't think that uh oh you know that's an easy question i'm not gonna bother asking it please your your questions are very very welcome um on uh, this channel so again uh, i hope this was uh, helpful if you have any questions drop them in the comments below thank you for watching god bless and uh, i'll see you in the next video